In this video, I'm going to introduce how to do drag and drop. Drag and drop is an action where I mouse over something, I click it, and when I move my mouse, it then drags and drops. Everyone should be familiar with drag and drop. Now, in ActionScript, it actually requires two specific actions. Now, when I mouse over something and mouse off of it, that represented two specific actions that I had to capture in ActionScript, mouse over and mouse out. The same thing exists with drag and drop but the actions are a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I have already put together here. So now I have an object here called Drag Me. Drag Me represents a movie clip that I've just placed onto the stage and have given an instance name. If we take a look at the script that's on the timeline, you'll see I've already set some stuff up for us. I've added an event listener for Mouse Down. If you remember, Mouse Down is when I take my mouse button and I push it down. It doesn't represent the, the click, which combines mouse down and mouse up as one single action. In this case, I want to represent mouse down and mouse up as specific, uh, as specific distinct actions for one another. When I do mouse down, I want to start the drag, meaning that I want to take the object and, and glue it to the mouse pointer so that I can then start dragging it around. When I then have a mouse up action, meaning that the mouse button has been released, I then want to detach the object from the mouse pointer. So right now I have both of the event listeners for both of those different mouse actions, and I'm executing two specific callback functions, drag poly and drop poly. Inside each one of these, I want to access the two commands that ActionScript uses to do drag and drop. The first one is called start drag. I want to access the drag me object and then add in the start drag. When I do start drag, I have some options of putting in some parameters inside of this. Some of them include if I want the object to snap to the center point of the object when I start dragging it around. I can also add some barriers to how much I can drag it up, left, right, or down. We're just going to keep this as a simple drag and drop without any different um, parameters on it. So I'm just going to keep the parentheses empty. So that does the start drag. Let's actually test this out and see what happens. So you notice that when I click on the object, I can start moving it around. But my mouse button, as soon as I let go of my mouse button, it's not letting go of the object. That's because I haven't specifically told it to stop the drag yet. So let's go ahead back and add that in. Inside of my drop poly callback function, which is associated with my mouse up command, I want to do something very similar to start drag by accessing drag me and then add in stop drag. Stop drag doesn't have any parameters associated with it. It just ends the drag and drop function. So now I'm going to save and run this again. I'm going to click. And I can drag the object. And then as soon as I let go of the mouse, it detaches from the mouse pointer. And then I've been able to just complete my drag and drop function. What we're going to do in some of the next videos are introduce how I can test whether or not the drag and drop has actually entered into specific regions of the screen. We're going to be introducing Boolean values, how to do conditional tests, and be able to create a, a drag and drop that will give us different actions based on where I've dropped the object on the screen.